My name is Jonathan Gill. I'm a researcher at Harper Adams University. I specialise in robotic systems, especially UAV technology such as drones, and I also work with ground autonomous vehicles for agriculture. Autonomous machines working together in agriculture will take away the dull, dirty, dangerous tasks away from us. We want to make things safer for us to work within an environment of agriculture, and autonomous machines can do things better than we can means that we're able to run operations for a longer period of time and keep them working. And with that, it's going to take away some of the, the lifting aspects, the, the heavy burdenous tasks that we physically do as people and can actually be done by an autonomous machine. So the ability for a machine to go off and go and do a job without it having to have um, an operator in that environment certainly makes things an awful lot safer for us. I think it's taken a while to get there, but now we're getting there with the technology of direct drive motors and battery technology that has allowed autonomous machines to start working in the agricultural environment. It's absolutely perfect for a small, non-aggressive looking machine to go out there and start doing tasks which are really needed out into the field. An all-electric vehicle will allow us to operate in enclosed environments such as polytunnels. There's not going to be any um, excess gases that are going to necessarily poison operators. The ability to charge these from uh, solar panels and wind turbines also has a massive benefit of it allowing us to reduce fossil fuels to a carbon zero. It would be really exciting to see technology that we're using now, so spraying machines and drone sprayer systems, all of which run on battery and fully electric motors, to grow an entire crop without having any fossil fuels being used to it. I would love to see a wine or a cider being produced with fully electric autonomous vehicles, and that would be a completely carbon zero product. We've got to a stage where autonomous vehicles are now at a size of operation that they're being useful to us. We're very careful that autonomous machines aren't going to become the same size as agricultural vehicles that we're seeing at the moment because they've had a single operator sat on them and they've had to get bigger and bigger to work the land. We don't have that problem, there's no operator sat on top of the vehicle, it's able to do its job by itself, meaning that the ground doesn't get as battered from um, the traction that is being applied onto it. I think it's really easy to use. It's, you point and go. It's literally got an image of the map of where the vehicle is and where you want it to go. You set a dot to that position and it will drive off to that point. It has got a joystick as well to make it nice and easy to operate in closed environments. And I think nowadays with autonomous machines being able to be operated from apps, that's certainly the way that we're going to be working. And this certainly is not a challenge to use. I think it's important to say that these vehicles are going to be taking away some of the strain that we physically have to do as a, an operator working in agriculture. Carrying, lifting, pushing, pulling. I think it would be really optimal to see these used in orchards, in vineyards, anywhere where the, the picking of a certain fruit is going to be placed into a punnet and then being moved from one location to another. And the added benefit that it's going to be fully electric, taking away the additional of fossil fuels being used to do those particular jobs. Fully autonomous systems are going to not be needing an operator to look after them. They're just going to go and do their job and come back again and it's just going to be known that it's done. And if it's not done, it's just going to tell you that there's a problem. And that entire environment where it's going to not cause any damage and it's going to do an exact job will start happening very soon. Fully electric is going to be the future where we're not using fossil fuels to work with our land and we're able to sequester more carbon than we're taking out of planet Earth.